Welcome to Draw Process, page 45 of First Sun and Sword today. I'm Ike. I'm going to thumbnail, pencil, ink, and you'll see the finished page at the end. And throughout, I'll talk about the mindset stuff and everything about being uh, the practice of my art, making comics. Okay, here's the script. It's a very simple script. It's just telling me what happens um, to get me from point A to point B. I know when I wrote it that I could change things once I'm drawing it out, I might have some suggestions for myself to improve it. But basically, point A to point B. Point A is I have to show that we're back inside and that we're back with the fight with King Croc and Sword. And to get to point B is uh, that Croc's eye uh, gleams his grin, showing that he sees an opening to attack. So uh, the anticipation he's about to attack, which will occur on the next page. Uh, so I've got to get from there to there, and all that's happening in between is fighting. So I, I kind of wrote out how that might look. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I just have to do it in, a, in an interesting way, so I'm not stuck with the script as it is. So I'm, I'm thinking of King Croc finally standing up. In the fight, he's been uh, crawling, and now he stands to face Sword. It, it would imply uh, the, the boss is leveling up. There's like a, another level here uh, to the fight. So he stands up. I wanted a nice tall panel, and I just had this visual image of, of Sword in a deep kind of squat with his, his sword up in guard um, with this tall croc towering over him. So I wanted a nice tall panel, and I'm, I'm keeping it narrow and tight. I don't need to show um, the dragoness on the side or, or son who's near him. Um, that's one tall, tall panel on the left. Now on the right, I think I can, and you'll see I even made it taller. I, I've uh, I've lowered where I want that panel to go, and I drew a couple arrows there where I want it to to go all the way down to, so a really tall panel. Now for the eye to, I have found when I read a comic that has a really tall panel on the left, it is very easy to just look at the top of that panel and then go straight to the panel on the right and not actually let your eye go all the way down that panel. It can kind of be awkward to read so far down and then have to jump back to the top on the other column. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, make sure that you do read this panel all the way down. I'm, I'm going to use some word balloons to help with that. And by having sword like low in the panel, uh, it's going to, to bring your eye down. But then to not have the eye jump so high back up, um, I am going to have the, the first panel or like uh, the bottom of the first panel is going to be on a diagonal. So instead of just, just having a square panel, uh, I was deciding to go with with this this diagonal bottom to the panel so that it helps uh, create this, this line that follows uh, the shadow and, and where, like, near Sword's body in the first panel and his sword kind of as the sword runs horizontal there that he's holding... It will help guide um, guide the eye towards the top panel. I wanted to um, kind of lengthen the first panel as much as possible on the left side, but I didn't need to do it all the way on the right side. So I, this is what I'm thinking when I'm considering doing this differently than I usually do, because I don't usually have diagonals. Uh, on gutters, uh, on, on the panel borders, but uh, there's reasons that, that it felt like the right call this time that had to do with the, the flow of the page. So, uh, yeah, you see me working it out right there. So uh, and notice that uh, in the second panel there, not only is the, the bottom of the panel on a diagonal that kind of flows up toward the right, but but uh, the, the King Croc shapes, they just flow right up to the right on a diagonal. 
and so does Sword's body. But then the swing of his sword is is back down uh, on the right side toward uh, toward the panel beneath it. Um, yeah, shapes. I mean, I, t I talk about this like sort of a different a different shape and movement to each panel, and then trying to get them to like flow into each other. So trying to capture, you know, those certain uh, flow and movement and shapes on each panel, but using the figures I have and still trying to give them good acting, good movements to their body that, that work on the acting level, on the realism level. But then on, the, on that next level up, they work on the page design. They work graphically. And you have to do both. And so we have, uh, yeah, King Croc lunges. In the last panel there, he lunges uh, and bites down or, or tries to crush Sword down on, on the, uh, the left side of the panel, but Sword lunges to the right to escape. But this is the moment where uh, King Croc will have to have a certain grin and like gleam in his eye a certain direction. He's looking where you get the sense that He's confident he's about to get sword, which he'll do on the next page. With the Sharpie, just working out some final choices on, on the shapes and stuff. Does this work? If I position them like so, where could I put the shadows to, in such a way, that, you know, to keep sword popping off the background um, you know swords hair is usually black uh, and his beard and stuff so if I have him on a black background that gets more difficult to to have him pop off of it uh, if there's detail in King Croc's body that's behind swords body or his head that could make it harder to see swords silhouette to have him pop off the background so um, that's some of the stuff I'm working out with the sharpie here The shape of the room, like uh, where the floor tiles are going to fall. This is because, okay, where does this shape work? Have I positioned them um, where where the the look of this panel and the shape of the panel like works with the reality of the background and works as a design? And there's the finished deal. And now I actually have to draw it. Um, I do want to work on getting faster at this I because um, I've kind of already drawn it at this point and then I'm gonna have to draw it again um, we'll see what I can come up with uh, I'll be sharing the process here on this channel as I as I develop better and newer ways for me to to work these things out but but I like the thought of if I could work that out on the Bristol board on the, on the comic book page um, it would just It'd be faster, and I wouldn't have to redraw things. Um, but I don't know. So, I mentioned it last week. Um, drawing these pages, I'm coming back to the same, the same problem, the same lesson. And I'm trying to pay attention to what it's telling me. Uh, it, it could be... Um, it could be telling me at times that I am lacking in certain uh, knowledge of anatomy or sh where shadows would go. Uh, sometimes it's telling me that I'm getting too tedious and, and too focused on, on details that are not um, going to help with the, the speed and, and the story. Um, all sorts of things that, that I'm really trying to be present, really try to pay attention uh, to what those lessons are. Um, later, when I finish the page, I, I can look at it 
even more so in a, with a critical eye or I can look at it with comparison to past pages I've done and see uh, if, if I'm going down the right direction. I can always double check like that, but while I'm drawing the page, it is not, it's not really the time for comparison uh, and criticism. It's, it's uh, getting in a certain kind of flow. Um, you, where I just do it. I just have to go with it. And then later I can judge how I did. And for me, that's, that's, that's important to being my practice, being the practice of my art, is, uh, you know, you could call it more of a cartoonist maybe too, uh, that... I am expressing myself. It's a performance when I draw pages. It's not, I'm not trying to create perfection uh, or something. It's, it's, an, it's, it's a performance. And I want to be able to get into that flow state, communicate with that liberty and that freedom, and improve on that and improve on that so that over time I become a master at sitting down and drawing a page every day and, uh, communicating, you know, through story every day. I get faster at it. I get uh, more clear in my communication, more solid in my decisions. Um, and it's more of a flow. Now, um, that's, that's the way I do it. I don't know that everyone should because there's costs involved with that, that I don't experiment as much with different techniques as other people would. Um, because in some sense I need to come back, I need to control more variables and come back to the same problem uh, again and again to to work on the, the meta problem of like the flow. Um, so so I'm not I'm not experimenting or redoing things as much and uh, that leaves room for slower development in some ways because it's going to be a longer period of time before I try uh, other things that, that I could have tried. Um, it might be longer before I, I learn certain things because I'm not as critical on myself or redrawing things, uh, to get them just so, uh, so, so it can be a longer path and slower in certain ways, but, uh, uh it's right for me, I think. And I do think there's a case to be made for it that Something worth doing is worth doing slow. Uh, there, there doesn't need to be a rush. That we could, uh, even, you know, as I'm speaking on this video, I'm like, yeah, I can relax. I don't need to rush. There's something worth saying is worth saying slowly. And that's definitely part of what this channel is, is me trying to speak very honestly uh, so that's that's the journey um, here on the page I'm working out you know the, the, how much shadow am I going to put on his figure will that help uh, sword pop off of off of that background of King Croc or uh, make it confusing or what so uh, that was a challenging one because they're they're overlapping so much and they're moving in the same direction so much that even just the silhouettes the basic shapes are already competing to a degree um, so it, it did make that kind of challenging to work out I don't know that it was the wrong choice though because uh, I did it on purpose I was trying to create a, a strong movement in that direction with the, the overall design of that panel. Uh, so it did serve that purpose well. It just made it um, less clear from, from him in the background figure. Yeah, so... Uh, Yeah, back to the same lessons. Trying to learn them, the uh, the shapes of of the uh, 
of the crocodile and his head and his body, that, that is an ongoing challenge. I worked some of it out in my sketchbook. I'm, I'm looking at previous pages. Even while I'm drawing this page, next to me I have the prior pages that I can flip through. I'm trying to keep track of, of, of how he looks. And I'm getting better at drawing him, but then it's like changing from the initial design. So uh, that, that, that's a bit of a challenge to keep track of. Um, it's much easier with like a human body because even if the, it's not quite, the, you know, a unique person and you, you, you might change their body some, but there's, there's an understanding of the structure of the human body. But for this, this creature that I designed, there is no reference exactly other than how I've drawn him in prior pages. Uh, and, and I don't have a good map in my mind of his structure. Um, Yeah, and I mean, and I've even thought about that. I could, uh, I could put more work in to really work out the structure, and I could also draw my comic pages in a more structured manner, where my figures are much more built out of shapes, and and, and follow the structure for each design of each character. I could approach it that way, but then there's a part of me that does not want to do that. That I want to be able to like think in my mind, okay big crocodile king and just draw it on the page and and move him around and let him exist and let him just be drawn you know um not built necessarily uh and so that i have a i have a tension in me between between those two ways of wanting to do it um it's definitely a tool in my my toolbox to to have the shapes and design that you build the characters on and use those on the page but what I'm doing is much more of a expressive, loose uh, drawing. Yeah. So. So that's one aspect of of my journey that I that I think through, and uh, balance <laughs> balance on. Yeah, I do think I think the more the more I do this, the more uh, the more I I appreciate artists that it looks like they just drew the page. Like um, it looks it looks hand drawn. It looks uh, they they can throw figures and backgrounds in very kind of effortlessly, seemingly. And I see a lot of that with manga that that kind of skill. And I'm appreciating it more and more, um, and moving that direction more and more, and uh, and I'm I'm wanting to find more of a a marriage between my pencils and my inks, that the inks wouldn't look like such a different thing from the pencils, or at least that the pencils are like left very loose, and then I let I trust myself to ink it. Um, off of off of very loose pencils without without really defining things that well um you know that would it would be faster it would be more efficient but it's uh it's trying to yeah it, it is more perfect right it's more uh really like in unity really um well developed and in in process it could look rougher it could look messier along the way but I'm not aiming for perfection on this particular page. I'm aiming for perfection in the, the practice, in the, in the, like, down the road. And I think that's important uh, to keep in mind. Are, you know, are you looking for uh, success this minute, you know, or is it, is it a longer-term view? Uh, and, and for me, it's really developing into more and more of a very much longer term view. And I feel like this is, for me, this is very much an improvement in my mindset because it, maybe it has to do with getting older. I, uh, I think about it with my relationships and everything, a much more long term view. Uh, it, it can lead to more peace, better, uh, motivation and like goal oriented behavior, um, delayed gratification, um, better planning and accomplishment and stuff like it's kind of higher ordered thinking 
uh, and higher ordered morality uh, to be able to think in, in terms like that. Uh, and I think it applies to art and to being an artist. Um, I think it would apply to being a, an author or a poet or something too. Hmm. And yeah. And as this changes for me from the hobby or the thing that, uh, that's kind of my, my private interest that I do, uh, in private, um, and hope to someday make public as in making money at my private thing. But I, it's moving from that to, uh, a, a much more like meaningful because it's this long-term view I have, it needs to be much more meaningful and much more, uh, other others oriented that I'm becoming my best practice and sharing it so that I can help others be their best practice too. Um, that it's not just for me anymore. Uh, this thing that was just for me, it was a way for me to escape and have, have my own domain, my own place to, to develop and learn and grow, uh, needs to be shared. Right. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a changing view. And I think, uh, I think it'll rescue me from burnout because, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be, uh, I don't know, 50 something years old and, um, and thinking like, why am I still doing this thing? You know, like, uh, do I really need to keep, uh, doing this private hobby so intently, um, when it's just for me, uh, I could see myself thinking that way, that it wouldn't, that it isn't meaningful enough to engage in, that it's just like liking video games or something that you might waste time on. Uh, it, I can't let it be that for me. So I have to make this meaningful. I have to make it for the better of others and uh, that I'm accountable to them. And that's what this channel has been helping me with too. But I, yeah, I'm very, very hopeful for the future. Uh, that this is, this is the right way to go. I'm excited to see how I can help people and what difference I can make. And, uh, and it starts here. It could, it could be decades down the road that I see a lot of results from that, but it's, it starts now. Yeah, I really liked how this panel looked. Um, when I started in the pencils with just a, a, a much more loose line gesture, uh, line of action, um, for, for his, for, for how, um, well, both of these, both of them, croc and sword are, are lunging here. Uh, it is such a, like, it is such a deep, um, lunge that he's in. Um, if I, if I was trying to, you know, use reference, uh, for, for, for certain poses like this, it would be very challenging. Uh, and if I didn't use a, a real loose gesture, but tried to just start drawing a figure in that, in that position, it would also be very difficult. It would end up looking stiff. Um, but yeah, very, trying to get very deep, uh, you know, a very deep lunge, a very, uh, extreme dynamic pose in that last panel. And, uh, I think my, my art has a real kind of, uh, some of it's that, that heavy blacks, but it has like a weighty kind of static feel to it, I think. Um, but I like those figures to be in very expressive moments when they get caught on camera, like it's a still shot and they kind of look still, but very dynamic in their pose would be the goal that you're capturing a very, a, mo a very active moment. You'll notice the background up above King Croc in the last panel and the panel before that, 
uh, I penciled in like where these walls would be in perspective. Um, in some of the prior pages, I was using a lot of shadow on the back walls to show where there's there's shadows from the the lighting. Um, and I was showing the the line work for like the the stone walls. But a lot of times that's um, creating tangents and like, distracting so um how much blacks i add to like the foreground uh to create greater like weight depth contrast uh there's a point at which like i can just let the background disappear so i i may not even bother I, more so than in you know six pages ago uh i'm starting to let the line work break or or just kind of trail off and, and end and not bother showing anymore because like up above King Croc's head there, I could have thrown that in shadow. Um, but if I had, it would have added this, this heavy black weight to the top of the panel, which would not help in, in where the weight needs to be, which is towards the bottom of the panel. Cause I want the eye to move down to the bottom. So, um, I'm learning to, to let go of some of that and, and it makes it easier to draw. I can just let let backgrounds disappear at some point. Um, maybe even pieces of figures and expression, pieces of their faces even. like um, That's fun to see how much I can let go. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I wonder how far I would take it. We're on the last couple steps here white out, just cleaning up a few spots. Hmm. I've been wondering about his, you know, I've never been quite sure how long I want his sword to be. This could totally turn into a situation where sword's sword gets longer and longer, like, uh, throughout the book, like each book. Um, I like the length in the first panel, but then sometimes it looks a little shorter and then I, I don't want it too long because it's, uh, it, I don't want it to turn into like a two handed sword that you might grasp in, in the middle of the blade or something, which would be part of the techniques they would use, but I don't want it to get, get that extreme. It needs to be handled like, like a, just a, a one handed sword even, um, but on the long side, because I want it to be longer than anyone else's swords in this world. And, and part of that is already dealt with because his is like steel and everyone else is working with iron and uh, maybe even bronze. So, And the finished page. Fun dialogue. It, it took me a little while to work out what are they going to say. It wasn't even in the script. Um, but... You know, King Croc calling him just meat and a slave. And then uh, Sword's re retort that, uh, you know, that humans are masters and slaves. That, we, that, that, he, that a man is both, but you're neither because you're just a beast. This little um, exchange they have is, is it took some thought. <laughs> and I sat there with uh, the word balloons and typing and I, and I had to think about it quite a bit to like work out what to say. Um... Yeah, that's writing, writing dialogue, making it interesting, adding something to the story, not just the standard what needs to be said. There's the finished page. Thanks for joining me again. I hope you get something out of this that'll help you with your practice or getting started on your practice. Um, it, it's worthwhile. Uh, join me. <laughs> but I'll see you next week. Thanks.